Hello everyone, welcome back to Live and Let Dine. Today we're going to learn how to make a classic Bucatini Carbonara. This is a dish I've made hundreds of times uh, at restaurants that I've worked at. And it's a really easy dish with limited ingredients, but a really great dish to learn. Okay, to start off, we have some simple ingredients. We have a bucatini or spaghetti. You can use a, any pasta you like, really. Um, some nice fresh eggs, um, some pecorino romano, and here we have guanciale, which is pork jowl, smoked pork jowl. Um, you can use bacon. Um, I like to use bacon because it's a little bit easier to get, and it's a little bit more meaty than some of the uh, pork jowl that I can get. So, But either one works really good. Um, but basic, simple, fresh ingredients, that's all it takes. Now to start off, we're going to trim up our, por our pork jowl here. Um, what you want to do is you want to cut off the uh, any kind of tough skin. You want to look for pieces that have nice meat to fat ratio. A lot of pork jowl will be all fat. You don't want all fat. You want kind of like bacon. You want a little bit of fat and a little bit of meat. So what I'll do is I'll cut it down and I'll trim off any tough skin. And and what I'm looking for is like pieces that have, you know, just uh, nice meat to to um, fat ratio. And I'm gonna cut it into lardons, kind of like kind of like I would bacon. If you if you're using thick cut bacon, kind of use the same technique. And what I'll do is I'll select the pieces out of here that I think are the best and uh, get rid of ones that are too fatty or have too tough a skin on them. Next thing we're going to do is uh, separate our egg yolks here. and uh, I like to do it this way because you really need to get all the white separated and uh, you want to get the membrane off just to help uh, you know, make the carbonara as silky as possible. So what I'll do is I'll dump the egg into my hand. I'm going to be saving the egg whites for an omelet used later, an egg white omelet. But what I do is I roll it back and forth in my hand. You see that membrane there? You want to make sure you get that piece of white membrane off. So roll it back in your hands. And then you can kind of pinch it in between your fingers and uh, you know get the white off. But then you want to, like I said, look for that white membrane. And you really want to get that off. So I'll roll it in my hands, getting it, most of it off. And if I have to, I'll give it a little tug. Just want the yolk. You see that little membrane there, that white membrane? That won't turn into cream. That'll just end up in your carbonara. You don't want that. So what I'll do is I'll kind of pinch it with my fingers and kind of roll it. And it'll kind of come off. And then I'm just going to put my egg yolk off to the side. And I'm serving four, so you want three or four egg yolks depending on how much sauce you like. I'm using three. It makes about enough to make four servings. I've got one small child, so one of the servings is small. Again, just rolling the egg uh, back and forth with my fingers, getting all the white out and trying to get that little white membrane off. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to finely grate our Pecorino Romano. It's really important that you finely grate it and not just use shredded Pecorino. And it's important that you use the fresh stuff. The stuff in the can won't work. It won't melt right. Um, so you'll see I'm using fresh Pecorino Romano. And I'm going to shave it in this shaver here that shaves it nice and fine. At work we have a shaver that gives us really fine grate on it. And you want a fine grate because then it won't be stringy. It'll really melt into the sauce and make your sauce nice and silky. So I'm going to need about a cup and a half, two cups of this. And again, it's really important that you, uh, you get it nice and fine. Okay, we're going to start off. We're going to start our pasta off. Notice it's 5.05. I want to get the dinner on the table at 5.30. So I want to go ahead and start my uh, pasta water. Um, you notice I'm adding some salt, and what I do is I add enough salt to where it tastes kind of like the sea or like a broth. Um, you want to salt your water because it helps flavor the pasta. And here I have just a couple tablespoons of olive oil. And like I said, I'm serving four, so if you're serving one or two, you only want one tablespoon. And then we're going to render off our guanciale here. Again, you can use bacon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to saute that down and make it nice and crispy so it's kind of creamy on the inside and crispy on the outside. And just, we'll just give it a flip every now and then. You, know, you want to cook evenly and you'll, you'll notice my pasta water is almost boiling over there. And this dish is really quick to make but it's really delicious and, and uh, everyone in my family loves it. And it's really impressive when we have guests. So you'll see my pasta water is ready to go. We're going to take our bucatini and I really like bucatini because it really soaks in the sauce. Um, when I worked at Jonathan Waxman's restaurant, that's what he used was uh, bucatini, so definitely want to try that bucatini if you can, if you can get it. And we're just going to kind of push that down. My wife's doing the pasta while I'm rendering the guanciale. Now, one thing I do with my pasta that people tend to uh, um, 
look differently upon. They have different opinions of us. I like to move my pasta around a lot. I worked with a pasta cooker at a really nice Italian restaurant, and I was I was told to leave the pasta alone and let it sit and boil. Um, but I was also uh, told by this guy at, the, at a great Italian restaurant that did, did pasta that to move it around so it'll cook more evenly. Because I looked at him and I was like, "Why are you moving around the pasta?" And he said, "Well, because so it'll cook more evenly." And it made sense, and I started doing that. And of course, he was right, and he was a really great pasta cook at a really great restaurant. So I definitely took his opinion to heart. So we just move it around, and it takes about five minutes. You want about five minutes for that pasta to cook. And what we're going to do is we're going to test it here. Just take a strand out. Take a little bite of it. Break it in half. Take a bite of it. And test it. You want you want it just before al dente because we're going to want to finish the pasta in the sauce. So my guanciale is rendered. I'm going to add a couple ladles of water to the, uh, to the guanciale there. It's going to bubble up a little bit. I'm going to add a little extra water just to show you if you put a little extra water in how to take it out. And so we're going to let that kind of boil off there. It'll steam and get some of that guanciale smoke flavor into the water. And that's going to help us make our sauce. And so we're going to strain off our pasta noodles, but we're not going to dry. We're not going to, to rinse them. You don't want to rinse pasta. You want it to soak in the sauce. And so I'm going to go straight into the pan with that. And you see I have just enough water to cover it. This is a little extra water I put in there, just in case you get that in there. You can see how to take it out. But you want it to finish in that, uh, that water there. So you see it's 526. We've got about four minutes to go. Uh, my guests are already seated, so we're... They're getting anxious and, and ready for their Pupatini carbonara. So what I'm going to do is I'm add a little pepper to this. And we're just letting that pasta finish in that water there. It's going to soak up some of that smoky guanciale flavor. Now there's a little trick to carbonara in making the sauce. I'm going to show you that here in a second. Uh, you don't want to scramble the eggs. It's one of the toughest things about making carbonara is not scrambling the eggs. So the trick I have to that is um, I like to put my cheese on as a bed for the egg yolk. And you'll see how I do it here in a second. We're just letting that pasta cook. See, I have a little bit too much water in there, so I'm going to take a metal uh, measuring cup and just kind of take out as much water as I need. What I'm basically doing is looking at the water and seeing how much sauce I would like in my pasta. It's important to have the right sauce to egg yolk and cheese ratio so you can get a nice creamy sauce that sticks to the back of the spoon. Okay, once we're done here, take a look at it. See, it's only been a minute or two. Again, taking out just the right amount of water so we can make a nice sauce. We don't want a thin sauce, we want a nice silky textured sauce. Okay, off the heat. See, I'm going to make a bed with my Pecorino Romano. I can just lay it across. And this will help so that the egg doesn't go right and then you start scrambling. I'm going to put my egg yolks right over the top of that. And then quickly, this is a real quick thing. You want to take something, you know, that won't scratch your pan and scramble it real quick. And the best way to really, once you get those egg yolks broken, is to just toss it. I'm trying to keep it in camera view here, but you see what I'm trying to do here. So just toss it and get that sauce milk mixed up nice and smooth. Scramble it really, really fast so that it doesn't have time to... Uh, turn into eggs and scrambled eggs. It turns into a nice sauce. It mixes with that water and that cheese and that guanciale. It makes a great sauce. I'm going to take it off the heat. Keep flipping it around. I don't have a whole lot of room here or else I'd be doing the pan flip a little bit more. But you'll see I'm kind of flipping it. Making sure that sauce gets nice and combined. Then we'll go straight into a bowl. Little tongs, give it a little twist. So we're serving four. That's three adults and a small child. I like to put these in a pasta bowl. It looks really nice for presentation purposes. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over and we're going to spoon some of that sauce and that guanciale over the top. You'll see that sauce is really nice coating that spoon. It's silky. There's no scrambled eggs in it. It's just perfect. You don't need to add any salt to this dish. The Romano's salty and so is the uh, guanciale. So it's a really great dish. See how that sauce is sticking to that spoon? It's nice and silky. Wonderful tasting. And then to top it off, I'm going to add a little fresh, gra fresh grated uh, pecorino romano right over the top. And 
there you go. We're ready to serve it. There you have it, folks. Uh, Bucatini carbonara. Really easy Roman peasant dish. Uh, hope you like it. I know my family does. And for more recipes and tips, come back and visit us. Thanks a lot. And have a great day.